Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars and for those who are maybe new to this series this is a very informal setup where we just talk in general about stuff this that and the other it could be cars games movies youtube whatever basically and as always if you would like to discuss something in particular from any field literally anything it doesn't have to be cars or games then of course you can slap that down in the comments if you'd like to discuss that in a future episode and it's always the best idea to put that in the most recent episode of the series to make sure that i see it but in this particular pick as of course you'll have seen from the title, I wanted to try something which we have touched on before, but not in this specific way that I can remember. We've talked about dream cars, favourite cars, uh, cars that are underappreciated, um, project cars even. Not the game, <laughs> but vehicles that you'd like to tune up. I've talked about that quite extensively, but one of the most popular things for a petrol head to do is to imagine what their dream garage would be. And there's a lot of different ways of doing that. Most of the people who do it tend to go down a system of having one daily driver and then one supercar or that kind of setup. Or, on the other end of the spectrum, you give yourself a budget and then you see what you could get within that budget. What we're going to do this time, for those who want to play along, is your 10 vehicle dream garage. And within those 10 vehicles, there is no price limit. So you could have the 10 most expensive cars ever made if you wanted to. You could have the Moon Rover in there. But it could be cars and bikes. I know for me personally, I love motorbikes as well. And there are definitely some motorbikes in my pick of my 10 dream vehicle garage. As I said, price doesn't matter, but within that, you don't have to have a specific set of vehicles. You don't have to have one daily driver and all the rest supercars or anything like that. It could just be any 10 vehicles. It could be just something to potter around in. It could be something to have as a project car, something as a show car. You could have a full-on race car in there if you wanted to, or a track day special or something that you wanted to tune up, that kind of thing. So basically anything you want, car, bike, uh, truck, whatever. So I've narrowed it down to my 10, and although my dream 10 is a little bit fluid in some ways, generally speaking, my choices don't change that much, because I like very similar vehicles. So for me personally, I narrowed it down to two daily drivers, to give myself the option of how I feel on the day, four supercars, four very different supercars. I think probably one of them somebody could probably uh, call ahead of time that it would be here, but the other three I don't think you would expect necessarily. They are cars that I've talked about, but not necessarily for a dream garage. And then the other four are motorbikes, because as I said, I love bikes, and I would definitely have a selection of them in a dream garage. So first of all, for the daily drivers, I've got two. One of them you can probably guess, and that is the Ferrari FF. That is basically my absolute dream car. I don't really like referring to it as a dream car, though, because referring to it as a dream car, or referring to any vehicle as a dream car, kind of subconsciously reinforces this idea of it being unattainable, that it's a dream. You don't really want to tell yourself that, so I call it an ideal car not a dream car, because it is attainable. People do own them. So my ideal car, in terms of a daily driver, is the Ferrari FF, and I'd have it in blue, which is a similar setup to Shmi 150 on YouTube. He's got a good taste in cars. <laughs> and uh, I love the FF. I love everything about it. Funnily enough, a couple of the cars on this list, in fact, most of them even, are vehicles which initially I did not like, but then over time, I literally went exactly the opposite and now they're in my dream garage. It's actually funny, I've just thought of that, how many of these cars initially I did not like at all. And the Ferrari FF even is one of them. I didn't like this vehicle initially. But you get basically everything you need from an everyday exotic. All-wheel drive, four seats, tons of trunk space, well, for an exotic anyway, a V12 with 650-ish horsepower, over 200 miles per hour, not to 60 in like 3.4 seconds. It's just a great all-rounder. The other one, my other choice of daily driver, which is much, much rarer, much more oddball, and probably more controversial in terms of style, and once again is a vehicle that I did not like initially at all, and funnily enough, it was actually Drive Club that made me like this car, driving it on that game, 
It's the Sauvage Raval, sometimes called the Road Yacht or the Land Yacht, the Raval GTS in particular. If you're not aware about this car, you can do a quick Google search for it, obviously, but it's a four-door, four-seater supercar with one of the most complex and mesmerizing-looking opening roof arrangements that I've ever seen. It's an incredible-looking machine. It has similarities to a couple of other vehicles. There's a little bit of Lamborghini Gallardo in there, especially from the back end. But overall, it doesn't really look like anything else on the road. It's got a, a Corvette engine, basically, with 670 horsepower. It can do, funnily enough, a similar top speed to the Ferrari FF. It is rear-wheel drive, but the acceleration time is fairly close, actually. I can't remember the weight on it, but I believe it is much lighter than the Ferrari FF is. And... It's just an alternative, basically, to what an FF would be. The FF is more practical, but at the same time, the Sauvage has a level of practicality. The Sauvage, for me, is a car which I'd want to drive when I feel like being flamboyant, whereas the FF, I mean, it's still a Ferrari, but the FF has a little bit more practicality and a bit more all-weather usability, for instance. So that's it for my daily driver section, and of course there are tons of other daily drivers which I love. One car which almost made the list, an honourable mention if you will, and you could feel free to put honourable mentions in the comments also, would be the Lamborghini LM002. I love that truck, it's probably my favourite pickup truck, but just, I mean, up against a Sauvage Revol and a Ferrari FF, I don't think I'd choose an LM002 as much as I love it. Then, as far as my four choices of supercar, which is basically my toy section, just something to drive for a bit of fun, and within that you could have race cars, as I said, or track day specials like an Aston Martin Vulcan or a Ferrari FXX, but for me, I've got one car which is just an extremely over-the-top, pure power machine, definitely a hypercar, and it's actually my favourite hypercar. The second one is electric, of course, being me, I'd have to have an electric car in there somewhere, then the third one is a super rare, kind of controversial, but I think fantastic looking supercar. And the fourth one is the one which you'd probably expect me to have. Not necessarily the number one pick, but perhaps what you'd have as a second pick. Because there's no Zonda. I know that a lot of people would expect me to have a Zonda in there, but for me the Zonda is like an ultimate piece of art that I love. I wouldn't necessarily actually buy one, or need to buy one to appreciate it. So the four cars, the first one, which is fairly predictable, is a Maserati MC12. I would definitely get one of those, because I put the MC12 on a similar plane to the Zonda F. The Zonda F is a better all-round supercar, I would say. But the MC12, in terms of actually owning one, I think I would choose that. Then the second one is my favourite car ever the Shazetta V16T, because of course it's my favourite car ever, so I'm going to have it in there. That's the kind of car which would be fantastic for cruising around, maybe go to like the south of France and fly around down there with a 6 litre V16 engine behind you. The third one, which is the electric car, is the Remac Concept 1, which I absolutely love. That car is much smaller than it often looks in a game. It's reasonably heavy, but most electric cars tend to be very powerful, huge amount of torque. Again, in Drive Club, I kind of fell in love with that car on there as well, because it's pretty much the fastest car in the game. If you actually put it in a straight line against the Hennessy Venom or Koenigsegg 1 to 1, it can keep up with them, and for top-end acceleration, it can sometimes even beat them. So, pretty impressive. And also on a slight side note, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the new Tesla Roadster, but that thing looks fantastic. Well, in terms of performance, I should say, visually, I'm not a fan of it, funnily enough. I think it's a bit too understated for my liking. I would have liked them to have gone a bit more, not risky, but had a bit more flair to the design. It's a bit too understated for me. But still, Tesla's kind of known for being more executive looking than anything else, but that car is fast, seriously fast, 1.9 seconds to 60, 4.2 to 100, and they're saying 250 miles per hour, flat out. And I read somewhere that it's got 7,000 pound-feet of torque. I don't know if that was a typo, but that's absolutely insane. But still, pretty awesome, and like a 600-mile range. Absolutely incredible machine. It's basically a Tesla supercar now, because the Tesla Roadster before, of course, the first generation and the facelift, was a sports car, through and through. This one isn't a sports car at all, it's basically a hypercar in a sports car body. Which again, I wish they'd have just gone all out and made it look like a hypercar. 
But still, obviously it's their choice. But the Remac would definitely edge it out. If the Tesla looked better, then I would have cho chosen that. But the Remac is such a fantastic looking machine to me that, yeah, I'd definitely have that one. Plus, the Remac isn't exactly slow. 0 to 60 on that, I think, is around the 2 to 2.5 two second region, something like that. Top speed's about 220 miles per hour, so it's no slouch. Then, the last one, perhaps a surprising one, and this is the one which I mentioned being a hypercar, is the SSC Ultimate Aero. And I know that is not an obvious choice for me to have as a supercar in my dream garage at all, because it's not a car that I bring up that often, and it's a car which initially I did not like at all, as I said, like some of the others here. But there's something about the Ultimate Aero which just grew on me, and I don't even know why. Initially, I hated it. I thought it just looked like a blinged-up Lamborghini Diablo with a massive twin-turbo, which was just trying to be fast for the sake of it. And it was the fastest car in the world for about two minutes, but now people just don't talk about SSC anymore. They made the Tortara, but they haven't built it yet, or they haven't produced it yet. So they've kind of fallen off the map a little bit. Koenigsegg and Bugatti and even McLaren now with some of their models like the P1 and the replacement to the McLaren F1. They're kind of overshadowing the Ultimate Aero. And it's kind of faded into uh, obscurity a little bit, funnily enough. And I didn't realise that SSC had actually made an electric version of the Ultimate Aero. I believe it was a one-off. And obviously it's nowhere near as fast. It had something like 780 horsepower, I think, instead of the whatever the normal one has, like 1100 horsepower, but I don't know why I like the Ultimate Aero more. I think the fact that it has become a bit more obscure might be the reason that I like it, because as you guys know, I like cars that are undervalued, and I don't know, there's just something carelessly fun about having a stupidly powerful car that will do 0-60 to in 15 seconds if you just put your foot down because it has so much wheel spin. So yeah, I like the Ultimate Aero. Then finally, for the motorbike section, and this is where some people might not follow along, because I know not everyone on the channel loves bikes, but my number one pick is obvious to anyone who's heard me talk about bikes before. Of course, it's a Y2K, and that would be also the fastest vehicle in my garage. For those who don't know what a Y2K is, it's made by Marine Turbine Technologies, who is a company that take timed-out gas turbine engines from helicopters, and what timed-out means is that in a helicopter, you have a certain amount of hours that the engine can run before you have to replace it. Whoops, smashing my laptop. Um, a certain amount of hours that you have to replace the engine with, or replace the engine after for safety reasons. But the engines are still fine. They just aren't deemed in perfect working order anymore. So MTT take those engines and they repurpose them. And one of the things that they did was they made a motorbike. They built 17 of them, and I believe now they made, make them to order, something like that. A bit like what Horatio Pagani did with the Zonda F. It, it technically stopped, but he's still making them now. Like special editions, the HH and the Tricolori and all these. So the Y2K is a Rolls-Royce helicopter engine motorbike. It costs like $150,000-ish, sometimes more, sometimes less. It can do around 243 miles per hour, I believe. Some have taken it higher, or have claimed to. The official record is 229, but it can easily do more. And it's pretty much the fastest accelerating vehicle on the street. Everyone goes out of their mind for the Koenigsegger RS for setting the new world speed record, which, I mean, good on you, Koenigsegg. That was awesome. They hit 285 miles per hour, which absolutely obliterated the Hennessy Venom and the Veyron Supersport with an average speed of 277, I think it was. Was it 277, 278? Something like that over a two-way pass. But they hit 285 on one of the runs, so pretty impressive. At the same time, though, that's still not as fast as a Y2K in terms of acceleration. Because, to put it into perspective, and I have mentioned this before, a Bugatti Veyron Supersport, I believe it is, does not to 200 miles per hour in something like 20 seconds. Or that might be a standard Veyron, I can't recall. The Y2K does 0 to 227 in 15. And I'm pretty sure that's faster than a Koenigsegg Azira, or a Koenigsegg Azira RS. Maybe not, but that sounds faster to me, I, I don't know. And that's only to 227. And the thing about a gas turbine is you, the faster you go, the faster it gets. So 227 was the limit of that test, but to 250, it would be even more impressive because 
well, as I said, the, the engine works better the faster you're going. But yeah, that's a, a crazy bike, runs on diesel, it, it technically runs on anything that burns, but diesel runs the most efficiently with it. And it's just awesome. It's In fact, if I could only own one vehicle, a car or a bike, it would be a Y2K. I would literally choose a Y2K over any car, even over the Shizetta or a Ferrari FF. I love it that much. But then my second bike, um, well, in fact, all of my other bikes are more normal than that, but everything seems normal compared to a Y2K. My second one would be a Bimota YB6 X-Up. It's a Japanese engine in an Italian body from the 1980s. I think it's by far the most beautiful 80s motorbike such a fantastic looking machine, and if you do a quick Google search of that, the Bomota YB6, you can probably see why my channel's colours are the way they are. In fact, my whole colour scheme of HSG is directly inspired by Bomota. They are my favourite motorbike manufacturer. The Y2K is my favourite bike, but Bomota is my favourite company. In a similar way to how the Shizetta is my favourite car, but Maserati is my favourite company. And to me, Bomota is the Maserati of motorbikes. They're oddball, they're different, they don't try to necessarily outdo Ducati, just like Maserati doesn't try to outdo Ferrari, but they've got their own little slice of the market and they do well within that. So that would be my second one. Then the third one would be a much, much more ground-level bike, uh, the kind of bike that you could see every day even, a Ducati 748 SP, which is yellow with a white back end, much, much slower than all of the other vehicles. In fact, this would be my slowest vehicle, which is saying something when a Ducati is the slowest car in your dream garage, or the slowest bike, I should say. A lot cheaper than anything else here. You can pick one up for, uh, I think, like four or five grand. Gorgeous-looking bike. I just love the 748. The SP in particular, though, is the hardcore version, if you will. Track biased. Top speed's only like 150, so it doesn't sound that fast these days, but it's more about just the fun of riding it. And then the final one, which is another kind of obscure motorbike, an American one, is called the Mission RS, which is also electric, like the Remac, and it's one of the fastest electric suit uh, super bikes, suitor bikes. <laughs> Top speed, I believe, is limited, though. It does around 150. So there are far, far faster electric bikes out there. The Lightning LS218, for instance, can do, like, 220 miles per hour. That's why it's called that. So there are definitely faster bikes, but I don't like the Lightning. I don't think it's a very good-looking bike. The Mission, if you Google Mission RS, I think it's a fantastic-looking bike. Very similar to an MV Augusta, which I also love, but electric. And... Again, that immediately catches my attention. And again, that's kind of the motorbike equivalent of the Remac Concept 1, I think. That combination of electric tech with a genuinely fantastic style to accompany it. So that would be my Dream 10 garage. Four bikes, four supercars, two daily drivers. So, of course, I'd love to hear down below what your Dream Garage would be. No price, as I said earlier on, and it's kind of an eclectic mix for me personally. So, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.